Then we have Jared from Kentucky, pronounced right, KM, calling in to ask something about agnosticism. So, Jared, you're on with Eric and Matt. How are you? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm doing good, buddy. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, man. So, uh, I called last night and I talked to some people. Uh, all the comments that they wanted me to call and talk to you, apparently they think you're the end boss. So my question to you is in regards to agnosticism towards the triune Christian God. If it is the case that you're agnostic to the triune Christian God, it seems to me like it's going to entail a contradiction. Um, that contradiction is going to be as the reference point for the necessity, right, for intelligibility um, and, and saying that that's not necessary. So it's going to be in reference to, um, I don't know if you know much about modal logic, right? But there's two different things um, at play when you're claiming to be agnostic, right? And that the, the Christian claim is going to be that um, the triune Christian God is going to be necessary. And in modal logic, um, the, the contradiction to necessary um, would be contingent. So a contingent fact is, um, for example, uh, elephants are great. Elephants are great is like a contingent fact, right? Because elephants, it could be the case that elephants could not be great. Um, and so if you're agnostic to the triune Christian God, you're going to be uh, implicitly denying um, that the triune Christian God is necessary, and thus that takes justification um, in its own modal accessibility. Okay. So um, agnosticism it has a kind of colloquial usage and and a more historical philosophical usage you asserting that the triune christian god is a necessary uh a necessary foundation for intelligibility um doesn't stand on its own you'd need to actually demonstrate that that's an actual requirement so when somebody says i'm not convinced that the triune christian god is real um and I'll, I'll say it. Not only am I not convinced that the triune Christian God is real, but I find uh, the notion of a trinity to be logically absurd. Um, in any case, me not being convinced that it exists doesn't mean that I'm convinced that it doesn't exist, so I'm not necessarily making that assertion. Um, theism is the position of asserting that, for example, some God exists, and you can go with a triune Christian God. Atheism is the position of not being convinced of that. Um, agnosticism may not even apply to the atheist position because the atheist position is not asserting a position. So since knowledge is a subset of belief um, and atheism isn't asserting a belief, it might be absurd to say I'm an agnostic atheist in the sense of I am not convinced that a God exists because that's not a, 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 a proposition for which agnosticism makes any sense. Agnosticism may make more sense for a theistic position where you say, I'm convinced, I believe that a God exists, but I'm not claiming to know. And so largely, I don't care what people are asserting to know or not know until they, you know, they, they want to potentially demonstrate it. What matters is belief because we act in accordance with our beliefs. And I don't believe that the triune God is real. Um, not believing that the triune God is real is not, uh, a contradiction, uh, even if you were able to demonstrate the thing that I don't think you've demonstrated. Now, when it comes to modal logic, um, I tend to not care about modal logic arguments because that's about probabilities. And instead, I stick with, you know, Aristotelian propositional syllogistic logic. With, and when it comes to modal logic, I have problems with like S5. Uh, but the point here is that if someone says, I'm an agnostic, I might have disagreements with them in the same way that you do for some of the same reasons, but not because it necess necessarily involves a contradiction. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, so I got you there. So just to be clear, are you claiming to be agnostic towards the trying Christian God? Well, you're saying you got me there, and now you're asking if I'm claiming to be agnostic towards the trying Christian God, and I just said no. Oh, you're not agnostic to the triune Christian God. I do not believe that the triune Christian God is real. I don't make any claim at all about okay. whether or not I know it. I, how can you have a okay. knowledge you claim? If, if you're if you're not convinced Sorry. of X, you can't. That's not a positive claim. If I were convinced that X were not true, then I could then possibly take that belief and make a knowledge claim about it. 
but not being convinced that the triune God is real uh, is not a position for which I can have knowledge. Okay. Um, do you think you expressing um, that you don't know that the triune Christian God is, do you think that's an expression of your mental state? When I say that I'm not convinced, yes, that's an expression of my mental state. Okay, that's what I take a belief to be. So I'm not sure what you take a belief to be, but that's directly in adherence to what I take a belief to be. I think that's why you yeah, pause it. For my, my belief... Uh, because it was my, in adherence. My, 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 so, there's a proposition, some God exists. If you accept that proposition, you're a theist. If you do not accept that proposition, you're an atheist. That's where I'm at. Not accepting a proposition and saying, I'm not convinced of this, is a statement about my belief state, but it is not a positive statement of, I believe X, other than, I, my, if, if anything, it would be a meta-level statement that, I believe that the case for the triune Christian God has not convinced me. Yeah, great. So that's propositional. Right. And, and right. we've already expressed how that's going to be a belief in that regard. So I'm not sure why you're backtracking now, but you just agreed I, to that. I'm not backtracking. I'm clarifying that me saying, I believe that the Christian God has not made its bird of proof for me is not a statement of me saying, I believe that there is no triune Christian God. Oh, well, you're directly saying that you don't believe in the triune Christian God, like you're not affirming that the triune Christian God exists, Correct. which is directly the I'm, I'm, I'm that directly don't... affirming, I'm directly affirming that I am not convinced that that God is real. Not being convinced that that God is real is m my current state on it. What's the problem? Great. So that's, okay, so now, now we get into what I was saying. What I was saying is that, um, the denial or, or just the non-affirming that um, the triune Christian God is going to be necessary as the reference, uh, referencing point um, to gain truth values, um, well, that's just going to be directly saying that it's a contingent fact. And then that's going to take justification in and of itself. So my question to you is how can you no. justify the triune Christian God as a contingent fact? Um, I'm not convinced that the triune Christian God is real. You're the one asserting that it's either necessary or contingent, and that my not being convinced of it is somehow has an impact on whether or not I'm convinced it's necessary or contingent. I'm not convinced of either of those things. Well, ho hold on. Do you claim to know things out in the world? Yeah. Yes, I know many things. Right. And so that's going to be directly in contradiction as, as God not being the necessary referencing, referencing point for deriving truth. No, it's not. So that no, it's, no, it's, I'm okay. sorry. I'm sorry, but you just continuing to assert that does not make it so. You would have to actually make a case for that. Also, you don't know what I mean by knowledge. Okay, well, what do you take knowledge to be? Knowledge to me is a belief held to a, a significantly high degree of confidence that it would be worldview altering to discover it was wrong. And that I use that as the kind of common usage of knowledge of what people mean when they say, I know things, because justified true belief is an imperfect model as well. Okay, so to be clear, you don't have any justification for your beliefs, you just have like high level of certitude in your assertions? Knowledge, knowledge is, as I described, a belief held to a high enough confidence level that it would be worldview altering, altering to discover that it were wrong. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I can, I think we can work with that definition of knowledge. Um, although it's not going to account for truth. You understand that, right? I don't know that you have access to truth. I just know that when we're actually, um, engaging in propositions, we are either convinced of them or we're not, and we have some capacity to investigate some of them to determine whether or not they are consistent with our experience of whatever reality we're experiencing. Hold on. It, it, no. So it just seemed like you just claimed that you're not sure or you're uncertain if we can have any level of certitude in regards to truth, but then you made a certain or a, a claim in regards to your certitude um, in, in uh, at least a propositional claim, right? So that just no, seems I like didn't. a straightforwardly contra straightforward contradiction. No, I didn't. I, I, I talked about confidence levels. I am convinced that no one can be absolutely certain about anything. 
okay. Um, are you saying that there's some sort of contradiction in Intel from somebody having like infallible knowledge? No, I'm just, there's no, been no demonstration of how anyone could get to absolute certainty on anything because there's no solution to the problem of hard solipsism. Oh, well, well, that's not the case, right? And then we can just demonstrate this with like some sort of a conditional. It, it, it um, is the case. I can just there is no, there I'm, is I'm no you... solution. There is no solution to the problem of hard solipsism. This is this is what's been troubling epistemologists forever. Yeah. So I mean, I'm just going to give you the conditional, and you can tell me whether or not it would be the case. Um, if, and I can put it in capital list here, if it were to be the case uh, that the Triune Christian God exists, would He have the power as an omnipotent being to give me, uh, uh, you know, an infallible knowledge? I have no idea, and neither does anybody else. You have no way of knowing that's the case. Wait, wait, hold on. I We would be able to know if we let it on a truth table and there's no contradiction in tell. No, you you said if it were the case that the triune Christian God exists, would it be able to give you certitude or uh, an absolute certainty? And my position is I have no way of knowing that, and neither does anybody else, as far as I can tell. Okay, well, do you know how— Okay, well, do you know how truth tables work? Because we can directly lay this out. If, if, yeah, if I know, I know how omnipotent. truth tables. I know how truth tables work. I've been teaching this stuff for two decades now. Uh, you asserting that that the triune Christian God is necessary for knowledge is something you need to make a case for, and you would be the first if you did it successfully to convince me. Well, well, hold on. So I just gave you a conditional, right? And and in regards to proving whether you or not gave me, the heart you gave me a conditional that says. If, if the triune Christian God exists, would it have capability X? And my answer is, I don't know. Okay, well, I think we could know if we laid it on, on, a, on a truth table in the possible world. Like, it's just a hypothetical. I don't know why you're not engaging with it. You, you have, how do you know what the triune Christian God can do with regard to your ability to be absolutely certain? Yeah, so we can lay out his attribute set, and if there's no contradiction in tell them him and him exercising this ability, then it's the, then it's going to be the case that it's possible. <laughs> You're saying you know more like basic modal logic. It's not, it's not clear to me that you actually do. Jared, okay. Jared, do you think that there are things that this triune God cannot do? Oh yeah, I don't think that uh, oh. it can perform like some sort of logic contradiction. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. So this there is, is a set contradiction. So hold on, there's a set of things that this triune Christian God cannot do. We don't know what that set looks like. Is it possible no, we that do. granting... Hold on. Is it possible that granting, uh, how'd you put it, um, uh, unfallible knowledge to humans could be in that set of things? Um, so, no, because there wouldn't be a contradiction until the, the attribute set. I'm not sure what's confusing about this. No, no. So, you, you, there's a set right, of things. There's a set of things that this triune Christian God cannot do, and you're saying that we can derive all of them based off of contradictions. Um. Yes, directly. Right. That's directly because be, yeah. What about indirectly? Um. Well, are the things that are the things are there things in this set of are there things? Are there things in this set of things that this triune Christian God cannot do that cannot be inferred directly or indirectly? Or there's just simply elements in there unknown well, to us. Well, hold on. To be clear, when I said directly, I was Please ask I was my question. Like affirming the prophecy to be true. All right. Please ask my original question, though. Are there things in this set of things that God cannot do that we cannot determine? Oh, wait. Yeah. In, in regards to like modal logic, no, we definitely can, given the attributes. And that's only going to be until the logical contradiction. So you're saying only contradictions can establish as something in this set of things? Yes, that's that's been the claim three times now. I don't know if you're just not tracking what I'm saying. How do you determine this? Yeah, so when we're laying out, do you know how, like, you know, like, basic modal logic? Because, I mean, I've got to, like, like, lay out truth tables for you. I, I know what truth tables are, and I know a little bit about modal logic, yes. So go ahead. Okay, so, yeah, so when we're talking about a contradiction being entailed, that's going to be, that's what it means for something to be impossible. And in this regard of impossibility, it's going to be out of, outside of God's nature within this sort of modal scope. So when I'm talking about this and we're laying it out on a truth table, right, there's a contradiction in tells me it's not going to be able to be, you know, true in any possible world.
Yeah. So but, as but, I mentioned at the beginning, um, I am not going to accept modal logic. I have issues with S5 and you're in the assertion that if you can't demonstrate that it's impossible, that it therefore becomes not only possible, but necessary and true. So what you're saying is, if you can't show that it's impossible for God to give someone infallible knowledge, then it is necessarily the case that God can give someone infallible knowledge, correct? It, well, so no, no, that's not going to be a repetition of what I said. Um, I was giving you a conditional statement on whether or not like it would be like some sort of impossibility drive or some sort of contradiction within the set of hypotheticals. Are you saying if not then are are you saying right? that with if there's no way to demonstrate that something is impossible, that it is therefore possible? No, that's not at all the claim. So I've I've explained so then, three times now. So then uh, so the, uh, it, stop with this I've explained three times now. Maybe we're just dumber than you, but you're going to actually have to do the actual work in front of us. So if your position is that, hey, let me show a truth table and show there's no contradiction, that is completely, completely an implementation of if we can't show X is impossible, if X does not lead to a contradiction, then er therefore X is possible and then that, through modal logic, leads to X, therefore necessarily, necessarily possible in some world, et cetera. The issue that we're having here is the question that you're asking is, is it possible for the triune God, as defined, to give me infallible knowledge on a subject, correct? Yes, and by possible, I mean there's no contradiction entailed. Okay. I don't care if there's a contradiction entailed because that's not enough to say that it's possible. A contradiction would only show where it's impossible. And so the implication is if there's no contradiction, the, your implication is, is if there's no contradiction shown, then it's possible. Wait, Matt, what do you think it means for something to be impossible? I just asked, so if you're saying if there's no contradiction, does that mean that something is possible or true? Wait, wait, do you think that came in the form of an answer to my question? I'm ans I'm asking the question for like the fourth or fifth time for clarity here, that it, do you think that if there's n no demonstration of a contradiction, that therefore the proposition is true or possible? Yes, like that's just like basic modal logic. I, I'm not like, and that's why I said from the beginning that you're not going to convince me with modal logic. And that's why when I said, are you saying that an inability to show that it's impossible means that it's possible and you denied it? I was right. That is, in fact, what you're arguing. Your argument is mm -hmm. that via modal logic, if there's no entailed contradiction, then the claim is true essentially no no that's not the, so again you said you threw that's in exactly, necessarily true. that's exactly what you were just saying so here's the thing if you said the triune christian god can it give me infallible knowledge wait was that a question yeah i asked you that no, I'm asking you, the triune Christian God, can it give me infallible knowledge? Yes, because when it's, it's within attributes that, yeah, and there's no contradiction entailed. How do you know that the triune God can give me infallible knowledge? Yeah, because it's within its attributes that there's no contradiction entailed. Are you just not listening yeah, to me? No, that's, somebody else that is a... All right, you jackass. You can keep making your bald ass assertions and you can keep acting as if I'm the one that's not listening, but asserting that God can do something because it's in its attribute set. How do you know it's in its attribute set? Yeah, because it's an omnipotent being and there's no contradiction until. Yeah. How do you know it's an omnipotent being and what the limits of omnipotence are? How do you, Wait, as a fallible, <laughs> how do you, as a fallible mind, know the properties of God? Wait, hold on. So are you, it seems like earlier you were granting that he was not omnipotent and you were engaging with it. And now that you prove, like you failed to like, like prove me to be absurd that you're backtracking on that now. Really?
I haven't, I never granted anything about omnipotence. You're talking about the characteristics of the triune God. And I'm asking you, how do you know what the characteristics of the triune God is? Um, yeah, that's just like conceptually what's entailed. Yeah, that's just like conceptually boring me to tears because that's just an assertion. How do you know just saying, what the character? Just saying it's built into the definition. The characteristics, right. How do you know what the characteristics of the triune God are? Yeah, because it's the analytic truth. How do you know what the characteristics of the triune God are? Last chance. Is, is, he, is he having a stroke right now? Just answer the question. You're going to dodge again? Goodbye. All right. Here's the, here's the issue that evidently doesn't see. You can invent a being and give it whatever characteristics you want in a fictional sense. And you can say, if this being existed, would it be able to do X? And you can see like, oh, if there was a being that could fly and give you flawless knowledge, then yes, that being could fly and give you multiple flawless knowledge. But that is a essentially circular and so the question was, how are you getting to what the characteristics are? Oh, because that's what omnipotence is. Yes, but you're asserting that there's an omnipotent God. But there has to be. God is necessary for you to even make an intelligible statement. Well, I'm not convinced that you can make an intelligible statement, no matter how much you sit there and chuckle at, your, at, at you know, what you're saying or how superior you think you are. Um, it doesn't matter because Eric and I are sitting here and we're the ones that need to be convinced. And so we're asking questions and what we're getting back is someone saying, ah, as long as in a truth table there is no contradiction, then it's not impossible. And if it's not impossible, then it's possible. And therefore, in biomodal logic and S5, um, if it's true in some world, then it's, it's some, uh, I'm going to get this wrong and somebody's going to be like, oh, you didn't even get it correctly. Um, if a necessary being is possible, it follows that it exists actually. I think that's a direct quote from Leibniz. I think that's I think that's the, the direct quote from Leibniz. If a necessary being is possible, then it follows that it exists actually. And the issue that I'm having here is that if you say X is possible because you can't demonstrate that it's impossible or you can't show a contradiction, then what you're really talking about is a model of God that is internally consistent you could write a fictional book about a fictional being that is internally consistent and it wouldn't necessarily exist. And so when I say, can God give me infallible knowledge? One of the things that he's overlooked is yes, you've defined what God's capabilities are, but there's two agents here as well. You haven't shown that this brain is capable even with a God manipulating things, because there may be things that a God can't do that essentially my having infallible knowledge might be a square circle, but we have no way of investigating it or, or addressing it at all. And so the original issue here, for those that, that didn't get it, is that he thinks that agnos agnosticism towards a triune God, which we can talk about the Trinity and the contradictions there, um, and how logically absurd it is to say that someone is three and one and one and three, and this is this and this is this, but it's not this and all that. It's just, I mean, it's patently absurd. But to say that that God's existence is the reference for intelligibility is an assertion. And so when Eric and I are asking questions about, okay, how do you know this? How do you know this? Are you, when you're defining this, if I say there is a God that must serve as a reference for intelligibility. And unless you can show that there's some internal contradiction there, that God exists and you are in contradiction to deny it. I mean, it would be, is there, you're asserting a grounding for reasoning when there need not be a grounding for reasoning. Anyway, I don't have more, but I, if, if somebody's just going to sit there and laugh, and every time I ask the same question over and over again, they're going to accuse me of dodging their question. Um, yeah, that's a waste of time. Hello, I'm Jimmy Snow, executive producer for The Line and avid candy eater. 
Hey, if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so now on Patreon or as a channel member with tiers specific to supporting specific shows and hosts. And it also supports our ability to expand programming going forward. You could also leave a super thanks down below, get a little special highlighted comment. And I'll tell you what, you could hit like and you could hit subscribe. Now, here are some video suggestions so we can fudge that algorithm. Go with one of ours. Forget everyone else on YouTube. I'm begging.